Coming up, I'm going to share four dirty little secrets that some app developers are using to hack their way into the top keyword rankings. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app marketing space. And today, I want to talk about some of the dirty little secrets or some of the little-known things about App Store optimization, better known as ASO, that you might not be considering and that other people are using to hack their ways into the top keyword rankings. I'm going to show you some real data that I've uncovered along with some of the results that we've seen for our clients. All right. So let's get to some of these that are really little secrets. I also want to get into some of the religion slash tactics stuff. I know I talk a lot about the tactics, a lot about the tactics and know that tactics change. It's a religion that's really important. I don't talk so much about religion because I feel like anybody can talk about it, right? Like the fundamentals have a really well-designed app, make sure it retains well, make sure you understand the monetization, make sure it's very useful, validate, all that stuff is really, really important. But really anybody with no skills can talk about that and pretend like they're an expert. So I like to talk about more of the tactic stuff just because I feel like that shows that we're actually in the game and really providing results for our clients. All right, without further ado, let's get into the dirty little secrets of ASO. Number one, incentivize or paid app store reviews. You don't understand the length of people that are going through or the number of people utilizing this particular tactic. So when I say incentivize, Obviously, this is all black hat stuff. When I say incentivize, I mean in the app itself, you're going to say, hey, I'll give away 500 free coins if you leave an App Store review. Okay, That's the incentivize model. Apple does not want you to do this, and the app developers are burying this inside their apps, but they usually give away virtual currency for a review. Now, there's no way to police this, meaning that I, as an app developer, can't assure that this person left the review, but most people are pretty honest. And so when I see an app with a ton of reviews that has no real brand, like a Facebook or a Yelp or something like that, I generally can probably guess that they are probably doing some type of incentivize or paid app store reviews. And the other side, the paid reviews is just you paying people to leave reviews. These could be bots. These could be users. I've shared this strategy in the past. So guilty, but you sort of pay people to leave reviews with certain keywords that you're targeting and you can hack your way into the top keyword rankings. I'm going to show you this app. I've taken away because I don't want to like call anybody out, but I've taken away the actual app itself, but I'm going to show you some app that launched just recently and it was num ranked number one for a highly competitive term and a ton of reviews right from the launch. So here we go. This is the app. Now, again, I've taken away everything related to the app itself. It launched on April 27th, 2017, and it had 49 app store reviews. And that screenshot was taken around May 1st or May 4th for five days after the launch of the app. And you can imagine like 49 reviews right upon launch. And that's what I started noticing for a lot of the big games out there too, is like, how do you have so many reviews and you just launched like yesterday? I don't get this. And that's when you started. I started realizing that a lot of people are buying reviews and trying to hack the system. And this is one case where they're ranking really well for a pretty competitive term and they're able to instantly rank right upon launch. So, you know, some fishy stuff going on right there. Okay. Reviews on May 1st. That's when I actually took the screenshot. Number two, inaccurate data. And I think this is huge, huge, because a lot of times we're basing our strategies on data that is provided through you know, some of the big tools out there like App Annie, Mobile Action, a lot of the ASO tools like Mobile Action, Center Tower, App Tweak are the ones that I've been using a lot lately. So I'm gonna show you real data that proves that they some of these have really inaccurate data, right? And you can 
you know, there's a way to really obviously verify this on iOS and on Google play, you're going to have to use the keyword planner, but I'm gonna talk iOS specifically here. Okay. So this is data and this is for a client of ours. So real keywords and real app store rank, but I'm not obviously showing you the actual keywords. Now this is data I pulled from all of the three ASO tools that I currently use right now. Okay. Sensor tower app tweak and mobile action. And what I'm starting to see is you can start comparing this. Like if you look at the first row, the first keyword, for example, you see that sensor tower is saying all three tools are saying that the competition's low for, so for difficulty, you want a low score for competition. You want a low score and for chance you want a high score. That's why I've highlighted this. This is just conditional formatting on my side. So all three platforms are showing decent traffic. Five is kind of low, but as you can see sensor tower, why does it say 2.2? And so if I've actually started to move away a little bit from sensor tower, just because Apple is actually showing this data. Like if you look under Apple search ads, you'll see a number five for this particular keyword and both mobile action and app tweak are pulling straight from Apple, their search data. So I really trust their scores when it comes to search scores. Cause a lot of times when I do my optimization, I'm looking for something like this, this keyword where it's pretty decent search volume and low competition. This is the perfect keyword for me. And so we're ranking number five, four for this keyword and that's perfect, right? So I'm looking for these gems when I'm doing this competition or when I'm looking at the competition and the search score is how I sort it and kind of figure out like, okay, cause I want to be, there's no point in being ranked number one for this particular keyword. Cause there's just not enough volume. Like five is a very, very low score. And I don't know what sensor tower is doing. Why don't they just show the data from the, from Apple? Like their search score is 2.2. Like, come on, Apple's already giving you five, just pull in five then rather than using their own algorithm. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is when it comes to data, that's why I like, I always recommend using two tools when you're doing ASO. I know some people might not be able to afford it, but it is definitely worth it when you use two tools. So here's just comparison right here. The search score for here for Sensor Tower is correct, right? It's around the same type of number, 34, 41. I don't know what the exact score from Apple is, but they're all pretty much the same. So 41, 34, and 3.7 is a search volume. So pretty good. Sensor Tower, it's bolded when it's under three, because that's what I determine as low difficulty. It's saying 1.9, and then Mobile Action is saying the 95% chance that we're gonna rank high, and we're number four for it. Unfortunately, app tweak is saying competition is pretty high. So if I've just looked at app tweak, I might not have considered this particular keyword, but again, that's why I really like having two particular tools because one says 95% chance out of a hundred that I'm going to rank well for this keyword. Well then, and another one saying 46, I'm just going to go with one that says it's really 95, right? So I'm just going to pick and choose. And usually I tend to find that mobile actions difficulty score, their chance score, is pretty accurate. So, so I'll go through some of these as well, right? As you can see, good. Oh, right here. Think about this. So mobile action, <laughs> look, I'm not affiliated with any of these tools is wrong right here for the search score, right? It's they, they're saying 41 app tweak is saying, oops, I misspelled this 11 and then search score for sensor tower is saying 0.5. Now it's actually around 11, the 10, I think it was 10 within Apple search ads. But as you can see, the, the search score is incorrect here. So anytime I see this type of discrepancy, I'll always put it into Apple search ads, that particular keyword to see what Apple says. Is it a high search for term or not? And as you can see, all three tools are pretty much saying it's pretty competitive and we're ranking number 23 for that particular keyword. So again, like inaccurate data a lot. And the last one I point out here, and that's why I pulled this is Sensor Tower is saying this is a three when it's around a 1.18. And, you know, if I had to guess, if this was a two, I wouldn't call it out so much. Now it's not complete, like dramatically different from the other tools and what Apple is saying. But I'm just saying I, I don't trust Sensor Tower's data as much when it comes to search volume because they could pull it straight out of Apple and they're not doing it. And they have some funky score right now. So really pay attention to the data when you're doing this. Like I said, a lot of these are going to be inaccurate because they're making guesses for the most part, unless it's the volume and the search score. So really try to use two if you can, or use Apple search ads to validate the volume, the search scores. Number three is downloads with keyword search. 
So again, this is a black hat strategy where I really believe that the other app that I was showing you from number one is utilizing this where you get people. So you incentivize people to search for a particular keyword and download your app. And we've run this for certain clients too. And we try not to, you know, like obviously share who these clients are because it is sort of black hat in a way, but just know that this is happening and be careful because if you do want to run this strategy, there are companies out there that are charging tens of thousands of dollars for this particular campaign. And we've been able to execute this because we've hacked the system with using white hat strategies too, and this strategy to have some really long lasting effects at a fraction of the cost. So if you do want to go down this road, just be careful. One, we haven't been penalized, but I want to be careful of how much I'm sharing moving forward because internally I'm seeing some things change based on the stuff that I'm sharing. So I want to really be careful about that. But two, it does work. It's just, it's not as long lasting. So really be careful with this strategy because you can spend a lot of money and not see long lasting efforts. We think we found a solution to give the long lasting efforts. But again, I don't want to completely share everything because I'm finding that certain things are changing as I can, as I start sharing things. So I want to be careful what I share. Number four, the last one that's, <laughs> that's kind of bugging me. Look, I kind of fall into this ASO experts type of thing, but I believe I'm a little bit different in that I'm showing you real case studies. A lot of times these people, these guys talk about ASO and they've never done ASO in their life. And so, and they just read a couple of different blog posts. I know people are sharing stuff that I've shared in the past. I don't know until people tell me because I frankly don't read too many things that are going on. I just talk to my friends, my mastermind and execute for our clients and come up with our own strategies to figure this out. But I think there's too many experts out there talking about ASO when they really haven't done ASO by themselves, right? If you Google ASO experts, I'm like, who is this person on YouTube? They're talking about all this stuff and it's all like generic crap, right? 101. I try to talk about the 201 to be like, hey man, I know what I'm talking about because I obviously anybody can talk about the 101. You can just Google it and find the 101, but really talk to them and be like, what kind of results or what kind of advanced tips? Even people who have hired some of our competitors and said, look, we saw nothing from these guys. I said, well, let me share this one tip with you. He's like, oh, I didn't even know that. I'm like what? You hired some other firm to do your app store optimization, but you didn't know this one simple tactic. And the tactic was obviously that different, the app stores index different countries. So if you're in the U S targeting the U S you can use the Spanish Mexico localization to double your keywords. Same goes for UK and Australia. And that's all I was sharing. She's like, Oh, I didn't know that. And this other company only talked about like the white, you know, like the generic stuff. So really when you're trying to figure out which experts to follow or even which ones to hire, really talk through like what some of the advanced tips that they would do. And for me, when I'm talking to a potential client, I just look, here's what you can focus on, right? I want them leaving the call with strategies that they can use, even if they don't hire us because I'm playing the long game here, right? So I, that is something that's been bothering me as of late, as I see more and more people trying to capitalize on app marketing and get into the space and sell a lot of these courses or tips when really they haven't done anything or they haven't shown any results. They're just talking out of their butts. All right. <laughs> Sorry, that's my little rant for the day. So that is it. That's the four dirty little secrets. One, incentivize paid reviews. Two, I don't even know what number two was. Oh, inaccurate data, really pay attention to that. Three, keyword, I mean, you could call it different things. We call it a keyword boost campaign, but downloads with a keyword search in there. And lastly, too many experts, just be follow, just be careful with the different strategies that you follow. As you can see, I'm showing you stats on things that are working for our clients. When, I'm, when I say this, when I show you this chart, this is like client data, right? I'm not showing the keywords or who the client is, but this is real data that's out there right now. And I'm giving you the data that I'm getting from other places. So ask the person, like, what is it? Some of these companies use proprietary tools. I'm talking about the expert stuff, proprietary tools. Like, give me a break. Like some of the, I don't need to build a proprietary tool. Let somebody else invest in that. I'm just telling you tools will change and some tools will be better than others. So really be careful about who you end up following on ASO. 
That's it, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast as well if you're listening to this on the audio form. And if you don't want to listen or watch, there is a blog post about this. So the content strategy is to utilize all three, the video, the audio, and the written word to give you advanced strategies at marketing strategies that are working today. Now, last caveat, just because I'm starting to experience something today that I didn't expect to happen, I'm going to be careful about some of the things that I've been saying as of late and something happened at a conference too. I just want to be careful because I do think that the app stores are paying attention to some of this content and I want to be careful not to expose everything and have our strategies not work as effectively as they have in the past. So I will give you that end with that caveat, but subscribe to the podcast. It's appmasters.co slash iTunes. If you haven't already, and you've been a long time listener, I would love a rating in within iTunes. And if you haven't hit subscribe on YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you can get some cool stuff and be up to date. And I could look cool for my wife as well. And lastly, the blog itself is appmasters.co slash blog or appmasters.co. If you want to work with us, just hit the work with us tab and just fill out the form. And like I said, I, I do calls once a, one day out of the week and it's 20 minutes. And I really try to provide valuable tips for you so that you can leave the call feeling like you got something out of it and you can use the tips without even hiring us. And if you want to hire us, great. Look, I'm not doing this for free, right? All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.